There's more empirical evidence, of course, for the devil being at work in the cosmos. Um, a lady on her way out who just asked me a question that comes up often. What about Aquinas' fifth proof? You know, where, where's the first cause? Um, how can you do without a first cause? And I said what I think, which is that this has become, given what we now know and how far we've been able to evolve the argument, a sort of late night squabble for sophomores, frankly, Aquinas. Because it only gives you a sterile infinite regression. Where did the first cause of the first cause come from then? The argument from design gives you the same problem. Who designed the designer? But there's an interesting wrinkle in the argument. You're also supposed to believe in, if you accept this theology, you're supposed to believe in the evil one, in the existence of Satan. Well, where's the first cause of that? It has to be God, presumably. Well, again, not my problem, but I'm, I'm glad it isn't. <laughs> Who designed hell? It might be thought wrong if I pointed to questioners in that I could have, for all you know, planted members of my immediate... That's okay, go ahead. You don't, if you don't think it's invidious, then... No, it's fine. Go okay. Uh, for Dr. Peters, have a sound up. Oh, over here. Uh, very well. You see, I didn't. This is where it should be. Yes. Uh, the gentleman asks me, taking uh, me up on a, a phrase I don't remember as well as I might, actually, but never mind, from my essay in Daedalus, about the, the sort of Chiliki and Disneyland, the, the transcendent, the infinite, the unknowable. Well, if that's what you think about it, don't claim to know what it's like, would be my argument. Um, ask yourself, is the universe finite or infinite? You don't know. There's no way of finding out. Which is the most impressive idea? Which would, which would overawe you the most? That it's eventually going to come to some kind of end or that it can't possibly end? Well, fortunately, as mammals, we are constructed in such a way as that we cannot understand that question. Um, the late Professor Haldane, I believe it was, who's a, a very important scientist of the last century, said that, the, I think I'm right, it was Haldane, said that the universe is, is not only queerer than we suppose, it's queerer than we can suppose. That seems to me to be a settled conclusion. That, therefore, do not for a moment trust anyone who says that he knows what the design is or what the plan might be. Those people must be wrong. You can, you can start by excluding anyone who makes a claim of that sort. And it hugely simplifies matters once you have. Unless you, um, unless you remember the story of the Buddhist and the hot dog vendor. You don't remember it. <laughs> the Buddhist goes to the hot dog vendor and says, what does he say? Make me one with everything. <laughs> ah, that's not it. The Buddhist only has ten bucks on him, so he hands it to the hot dog vendor, he receives a slathered hot dog, and no more. He stands up and says, what about my change? Hot dog vendor says, change comes only from within. <laughs> <laughs> the essence of the all is the Godhead of the true. Uh, make us all one with the absolute. This is piffle. You know, the people who talk it are simply trying to dull their own senses into a nirvana where there will be no pain, no conflict, no anxiety, just reconciliation and love and beauty. Can you picture anything more horrible than that? The death of the mind is what they have stored up with. Well, your call. I wouldn't go near it. Quite over here. There's a question right over here. here. Ma'am. Uh, I have a question about the... Uh, about the... The you just said. Yes. Uh, the universe is greater than the universe. Uh, do you agree with this quote? 
No, I didn't say he, the, the literal word, this was a time when the word queer simply meant strange or bizarre. He said it's not, not greater than we can suppose, queerer than we can suppose. Yes. Okay. The lady asks me if, if it's true that the universe is beyond our, or the cosmos, let's say, beyond our, our own mammalian comprehension. Doesn't that mean that there could, after all, be a god, or a prime mover, or a first cause? Um, not in the sense in which theology intends us to deduce a god from. No, it could not. Clearly it could not, because the argument used to be, well, obviously someone must have created this system because here we have the earth at the center of the universe, the moon going around it, then the sun going around it, then heaven and below that hell. Obviously, and we at the, we at the uh, particularly the church at the, the middle. That was the belief until a very, very short time ago. Hence the, re the resistance to the whole idea of the investigation of the motions of the universe, even of the planets all the stars because because religion is a form of solipsism um, it pretends to say that we should all sacrifice ourselves and be abject to the creator but it's not as modest as it sounds there's a trap in that it also says it's all about you and me he has a plan for me for you so hence my rejection of as with the mother Teresa case of people who you, fee you see sometimes scuffling around in Rome, for example, or Jerusalem, or actually anywhere else. They slightly shove you off the pavement and they say, sorry, I can't wait, um, don't mind me, I'm just very modestly on an errand for God. I don't find this modest at all. I find it the height of arrogance and conceit and vanity and false modesty. They can't possibly know that, and that if they claim to, they cannot have deduced it from the operations of the universe, which, which appear to have been caused by a gigantic explosion, which will also finish it off. And that we are fairly sure of now. If that's the design, what need of monks and rabbis? And if the design, if this is done in God's image, what, what Moloch or random dice player uh, could this be? So the the more you contrast the two things, the more it's impossible to derive divine authority from the extraordinary uh, variety and uh, majesty of, of the cosmos. Oh, it's <clears throat> yes. I was slightly afraid you would ask this. I'll rephrase it. The lady wants to calls me up on this. Do you have to be an atheist to be an anti-theist? Um, in, in theory, not. No. You could say there better not be one. Or you can say what you would think of the one who would have to be discovered by it. So ontologically, you could be dealing with an enemy rather than a non-entity. Um, and I would in that case take the Miltonian line. I would be of the devil's party. I wouldn't worship it. I wouldn't agree to be bound by it. I wouldn't become one of the serfs. But I am relieved on the whole to think that there is absolutely no evidence at all of any divine plan. And certainly not a divine plan that has me or you or any of us in mind. There might have been a first cause. It's been argued by some um, ancient religious uh, arguers actually. It could be that the machinery was set in motion uh, by some designer and then abandoned. Doesn't care what happens afterwards. He doesn't notice what happens to every sparrow that falls in the street. He doesn't mind whether you get divorced or you have a homosexual relationship or anything of that kind. Couldn't be bothered with anything so minuscule. So that's also, in other words, one can return this question to the believers. Couldn't you be, find yourself stuck with a God who would be hateful to you? Yes, you could. With God, all things are possible.